beginning with expanding maps on the circle, let's, let's begin with something. I, I thought that this was something of us mathematicians. We care too much about classification. But in fact, this is a, a thing of scientists. We all care about classification. We classify insects. We classify even <coughs> mental illness. Is that, uh, do you, can you read this? Yes? Okay, so in general we classify things and we aim at classifying things. And in order to classify things we need a criterion. So in, in math you, you will know, in algebra for instance you have isomorphic And if you have a differentiable structure, you have diffeomorphisms. So the criterion is focuses on what is important for us. Well, in dynamics, we have a criterion. We focus on the dynamics. So we will say that two objects belong to the same class if they are what is called conjugate. I think that you all know what a conjugacy is. Does anybody here do not know what a conjugacy is? Okay, let, let me just remind you what it is. So we have uh, two dynamical systems, F and G. And we will say that F and G are conjugate. If there exists a homeomorphism, such that it makes this diagram commute. So H composed with G equals F composed with J. F with H. And so this is, this produces classes of dynamics. So we, we aim at classifying expanding maps on the circle. This is what we are going to do. We are going to classify expanding maps on the circle. But sometimes uh, we don't have all the information. We cannot tell whether two dynamical systems are conjugate, but we can say uh, that some dynamics is contained into another dynamics. In that case, we're going to speak about, this is conjugacy, and sometimes we will have this, the same picture, but instead of H being a homeomorphism, it will be only a continuous surjective map. Okay? In that case, we're, we're going to say that G is semi-conjugate to F. Oh, sorry, here, should have said y to x. That makes the diagram commute. And it, it is never clear to me what, what does this mean who is the one who has more information? The one who is up has more information, okay? So we are going to say that F is a factor of G. Um, I, 
I presented both definitions. And I, I will tell you why. Here, um, as Corina has said, important objects of study are of the orbits, okay? So if there is a conjugacy, the conjugacy will take orbits into orbits, periodic point into periodic point, dense orbits, orbits into dense orbits, and the other way around. But in this case, you will take periodic orbits into periodic orbits, dense orbits into dense orbits, but not necessarily the other way around. You could have a dense orbit that does not lift into a dense orbit. Okay? Can you think of an example? This is, I will put lots of exercises. You just pick a couple of them, but I will put lots of exercises. So one exercise, and you can do it with uh, very simple dynamics, not necessarily the circle. We can think of even simpler dynamics. So think of uh, periodic point, periodic point P for F such that it's not periodic. So it's a pre-image is not is is not a single periodic point and does not contain a periodic point. Okay. So can you think of a periodic point P for F such that the pre-image does not contain also can you think of a dense orbit for F such that its pre-image does not contain a dense orbit for G? You can do lots of questions, even at this point, uh, many of, of you are familiar to these notions. And there's some, some question I don't know the answer. Um, perhaps it's known, I, I don't know. The, you can think of the semi-conjugacy as an order relation. Because you have that, it, well, it is transitive. If you, if you have this is a factor of this, this is a factor of this, then this is a factor of this. But, uh, and of course, every map is a factor of itself via the identity. But what about the symmetry? Is it true that if F is semi if, if F is a factor of G and G is a factor of F, is it true that F and G are semi-conjugate, uh, are conjugate? Well, I don't know. Uh, it's a question. Okay. Anyways, we, we have this conjugacy and semi-conjugacy um, will be useful to classify maps. And so let's begin with, Corina has begun with the description of maps on the circle and on the interval. So, Forgive me if you are already very familiar with this, but I want to introduce the lift of a map in the circle. You remember that the circle, uh, as Corina has said, you can see the circle as this quotient uh, between the reals and the integers. And you have this, this projection And this projection can be, well, I put it like this, but you can 
you can look at it as, as this, okay? Or x mod 1. And this can be seen as a semi-conjugacy between a map that commutes with this and the map in the circle. For instance, Corina has presented three maps. One was, uh, let, let's put F1. The notation will be the same, but she has... You can, you can define this in, in, the, in the circle or in the reals. And you, let's call it F tilde when it's in the reals and F when it's down. And then you will have that this commutes. So they are, this is a factor of this. It's not a, it's a non-interesting factor, but let's call it like this. And in the same way, she has defined the expanding map, which was 2x mod 1. And then, sorry, 2x mod 1. And then you can lift it to the reals like this. And then you will have this too. And the same with the, with the rotation. OK. So the, the issue is that you might be already familiar with this result, but let me state it, state it anyways. You always, when you have a continuous map on the circle, you can always lift it to the reals as a continuous map and in a unique way. So if you have a continuous map on the circle, and then there's a unique map in the reals, which is continuous, a unique modulo uh, integer translations. I will, I will tell you what it is in a minute. But such that they are semi-conjugate, such that f is a factor of this continuous map. F, small f is a factor of big f. And f is unique up to integer translation. I will tell you in a minute what this is. And this is called a lift of f. What does it mean that if f is unique up to an integer translation? Uh, let's keep the notation here. So that means that if, you, if we have two lifts, of the same map, then their difference will be an integer number, will be a constant integer number. Okay. Okay. So this allows us to define the degree of a map. Roughly speaking, the degree of a map is the number of branches the, the map has when you draw it as a map of the interval. Um, we, but we can define it we can define it. We, if we have a lift, the degree of the map will be that integer. I don't know how to, ah, uh, here. This is an integer. Can you tell me why this is an integer? You know why? Why f x plus one minus f of x belongs to the integers? Do you know why? Yes, both of them are lifts. Because if you have this as a lift, then immediately this will be a lift. OK? F, you can check it yourselves. F of x plus 1 will be also a lift. will be a continuous map. It will, it will commute with this. will make this diagram commute. And so, since the 
lists are unique up to a, an integer translation, this will also belong to the integers. Okay? And this is called the degree of F. And roughly speaking, it's the, it's the number of branches that small f has when you draw it in the interval. So, for instance, what is the degree? Take, and this is independent of the lift. If you take another lift, it will have the same number. And if f is a homeomorphism, then the degree will be 1 in modulus. So what is the degree of this map? Can you tell me? Is, you can see it as a map of S1. You can, you can define this as S1, as a map of S1. Zero, isn't it? Because it's, it's zero in zero and zero in one, so the degree of this is zero. And what's the degree of this one? Two, okay? Can you see why? Well, you have a lift of a lift of fx 2x mod 1, well, a natural lift is just 2x. Okay? This is a, a natural lift. And so if you, if you calculate this, this will give you 2. And What's the degree of this map? One. Well, you have it. If it's a homeomorphism, it's in modulus, it will be one. But this will be one because you take out this mod one and you will get a lift. Okay? So, so this, the number of, and as Corina has drawn, the degree is the number of branches, okay? This has two branches, has degree two. This looks like, like if it had two branches, but it has only one, because the branches are horizontal in some sense, okay? So this has only one branch, and this has zero branches. It's, this is hard to... to it, it makes more sense when it is expanding. So the number of branches is the, is the degree. Okay, so we will classify expanding maps according to their degree. We will see that all expanding maps of the same degree are all conjugate. This is what we are going to see. This I'm not going to, if you are interested it will be there. I will not enter into that. So let's go into linear expanding maps. These are what uh, are the rigid models. The linear expanding maps are the rigid models. So first of all, what's an expanding map? Uh, what's an expanding map? We are, we are going to say that this is an expanding map if it is continuous plus C1 and the derivative is greater than 1 for all x. And since S, since S is compact, Since S is compact, we will have, in fact, that there will exist some constant doing this, okay? You will have a constant, a uniform bound. 
because it is C1. Okay, so we will, I will go first into two examples of linear expanding maps. You are very familiar with the two of them, but one was suggested to me by Stefan and I find it a great idea. Uh, so the first linear expanding map we are going to see, we have seen it already, is this one, 2x mod 1, the one with two branches. But probably it is a good idea what Stefano suggested because you are more familiar with that. It's this one, e10 of x, which is 10x mod 1, which is a degree of this. 10, okay? It has 10 branches. Well, it will be hard for me to draw them. No, that's okay. No, that's okay. Sorry. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, seven, ten. Okay. So here I will not draw them all, but you will have branches like this. There will be 10 branches like this. It will expand by 10. Oh. It's okay. So let me, let me show you an example of how this works. This is the dynam dynamics of a point. Have you ever seen this? Have you ever seen the dynamics of a point in, with the green line y equal x, like this? Yes, okay, so. So you have this, the line y equal x and the two branches here. And then you will have a, a, the dynamics of a point. We go here, 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 well, and so on. Okay. Okay. So we will, in order to classify these dynamics, we will do what is called symbolic dynamics. In in the case of two, and I will do first in the case of. 2x mod 1, but then I will do it in the case of 10x mod 1 because you will be, you will find that you are very much more familiar with this than with this. How do we do this? Oh, oh sorry. I, I will do this later, but let me, uh, I will do this later, but let, let me, let me first tell you how we are going to, to do symbol, symbolic dynamics. If the point is in, in the first half, we will assign them zero. If the point is in the second half, we will assign them one. Then you, you iterate once, and if it is still in the zero part, we will assign them zero. And if it has changed, we will put zero, one. And then the trajectory of the point will, will give us a sequence of zeros of and ones. But this is not hard. However, you will be more familiar with this in the 10, in the, in the 10 expression. Let's, let's get symbols for this sequence. So this symbol, this sequence, so in the first, 
you, we have to put them inside one of these 10 boxes. So it will be not here, not here, here. Between three and four, okay? So the, the first symbol will be three. This, this is a symbol zero, symbol one, symbol two, symbol three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay? Then we apply the, the, the map, then we will have pi, and then we do it mod one. So the second symbol will be which one? One. The second symbol will be one. We multiply by 10, we do it mod one, and the third symbol, four. And then, in fact, the symbols will be just its expansion. So it will be very simple for us. The symbolic sequence of this orbit will be just the the, it's decimal expansion, and in the case of this, it will be its binary expansion, okay? So we, we will go get back into this later. Let, let me first just uh, see a relationship between the periodic points and the degree, okay? So we, know, we all know what periodic points are, and one thing we want to know is the number of periodic points some linear expanding map has. And in fact, we are going to calculate the number of periodic points each expanding map has, not necessarily linear, whatever expanding map has. This will come as, a, as an easy consequence once we have classified all linear, all expanding maps. But we can do it in advance. We can calculate the number of periodic points each expanding map has only knowing their degree, okay? So let's call this the number of fixed points of Fn, Pn of F, okay? And we are going to calculate this Pn of F in terms of the degree. So for a linear map, for a linear map, for the linear expanding map 2x mod 1, the number of fixed points of e2 to the n is 2 to the n minus 1. The minus 1 comes because we are identifying this and this, the 0 and the 1. So we lose, lose 1, okay? And as a consequence, well, it's not as a consequence. They are what Corina told, equi equidistributed. So since they are also equidistributed, they, they are going to be dense, okay? So this, I leave this as an exercise. This calculating exactly for the linear expanding map is not hard, and you can calculate it. This can be a hint, but if you find any other way to calculate them, I will be happy with it. So let's do it with a general map. Well, first with other linear ex expanding maps, but then we are going to do with any expanding map. So what happens with, we have, when we have like this, 10x mod one? What happens in this case? Can you, can you tell the number of periodic points in terms of the degree? m to the n minus 1. Okay, let's see. Well, this will absolute value. In fact, not. I'm sorry. I, it, it depends on the on the absolute value of m, on the, on the sign of m. And the periodic points of em are dense. This will happen 
in fact, this will happen with any expanding map, not only for the linear expanding maps, but this will be a consequence of our classification, okay? So we are going to, to, have to show that these are dense. And we are going to show that this is the number. And this, in fact, is not going to be hard, but the main part of the proof, uh, you are going to make it because it's an exercise. <laughs> so let me, let me tell you how we are going to do it. Well, I have already told you what an expanding map is. It's there. And we already know what the degree is. And this is the main part of the proof. If we have two maps, F and G, on the circle, the degree of the composition is the product of the degrees. The degree of the composition is the product of the degrees. And this, this is going to be an exercise. In particular, the degree of the G composed with F is equal to the degree of F composed with G. Okay. And also, we have this for the iterations. Degree of F to the N is the degree of F to the N. And this, which is the key part of the proof of this formula, it's going to be an exercise. Okay, so let's prove why we have this. I don't know if I will have enough time, so I will give you some hints. Uh, so if it is an expanding map, the degree is greater than one. Can you tell me why this is? No, not necessarily linear. For any expanding map, the degree is greater, greater than one. One hint is that uh, if F is a lift for an expanding map, we also have that F prime of X is greater than one because the derivative is something local, okay? And the lift is it's locally the same as the small f. Pardon? Yes. No, the degree is general. The degree is global. Uh, yes, we can calculate it at, the, at any point. It will be constant. So the degree will be x. At any point, yes. No, it's strictly greater than one. Yes. Yes. And it will be continuous. So, so it will be all the time above one or all the time below minus one. This is and that's and there you go. Okay? Then you will have that this either this is greater than one or less than minus one. Okay? So the degree will be in absolute value greater than greater than one. Okay, and so uh, why is this? Now remember what we have said that the degree of Fn
we have this. Okay, we have just said this. So, we have, let me, this we have already done it. But let's see that we already, we only need to prove this. Why is that? Okay, this is the number of point of fixed points. Okay, so this is in fact P1 of Fn. Okay, if, if we prove this, if we prove this, we will have that P1 of Fn will be, if this is true, we will have this. This implies this. But this is equal to this. Okay? So we only need to prove this for P1. We only need to prove this for P1. So let me see if in this 10 minutes I can do this. So is it clear why, why is this? If we prove this, for, for, for any f, in particular, we will have this. But this is equal to this, so just to prove it for fixed points is enough. So we have to count the number of fixed points in terms of the degree. Okay. So we begin by taking a lift of f, call it big F. Um, let me see. And let's consider a G. We need to count, in some sense, the zeros of Fx minus x. Or what is the same, the number of times this cuts Z. Okay? between 0 and 1. And so we have to count the number of zeros or integers of GZ, GX. Okay? And, but this equals the degree of F minus 1. You know? You know why? This is f of x plus 1 minus x plus 1 minus fx minus x. Okay? So this is the degree of f. This goes with this, and this is minus 1. Okay? So This implies that there exists at least this amount of points such that G belongs to Z. Can you see this? Yes?
what happens if the first one and the last one are the same? You still count the you will not have that because it's the degree is greater than one. But you will not have it because the, the degree is greater than one. So you will have, the map is expanding. So the, yes. This? Yes. All this. But you, you, this, you are counting twice. That's why you, you subtract one. You, you are counting this twice. Yes. You, you have to, to subtract one because you have, you are counting you are counting the endpoints twice. So when you have this, well, you will have this gx plus 1 and gx. And you count all the times this cuts how many integers are there in between. And then you will have degree of f minus 1 because this is this, it's because of continuity of G. But this is at, at least, at least in fact, because this will, you will have at, by the Bolzano, you will have at least degree of F minus one point that belong to set, at least. But on the other hand, we have that GX is greater than zero in absolute value. Okay, because um, gx is fx minus x, and this f prime is greater than one in absolute value. Okay, so this will be different from zero. So it will be either increasing or decreasing. So we have that this cuts at least degree of f minus one points in absolute value, but if it is because of Bolzano, but if it is uh, strictly increasing or decreasing, it will cut each of them exactly once, okay? And so the number will be this, the number of fixed points of F, which is the same as the number of zeros of this, will be exactly degree of F minus one. The number of times this cuts an integer coordinate will be exactly the number of zeros of G, which is the number of fixed points of F. And this is exactly proves this. So we have, we counted, this is not for linear, it's not for linear expanding map. This is for any expanding map. The only thing that we have used is the derivative of f, we have used that the derivative of f is in, ab, in absolute value greater than, f, greater than one. So all expanding maps have degree f minus one fixed points. And the number of periodic points are degree of f to the n minus one in absolute value. So. This is, uh, we, have, we could count the number of periodic points just by using the definition of degree. We will s later see that in fact, we have another path of calculating this because it is very simple to calculate the fixed point, the, the periodic points of a linear expanding map. And then we will see that all of them are conjugate. So they will have the, the same number of periodic points. But this is a direct proof of this. Okay, so to finish, I have three minutes, but I will define, you already know this, okay? So let me just, it's just a remark. We will say that F is topologically mixing if for any two open sets, 
We have this, okay? We have this, and in particular, there's uh, another exercise. If F is a homeomorphism on the circle, then F is not topologically mixing. Pardon? This, the definition is up here. It's for the future, okay? So from, from one end on, you already know this definition, don't you? When you have, okay. Rotations are not topologically mixing. Isometries are not topologically mixing in the circle. And, but let's put it some more difficulty. Homeomorphisms on the circle are not topologically mixing. But you, can, you can get a flavor with the rotations. And so expanding maps on the circle are topologically mixing. This is not hard. I have it in this following slide, but I will end it here because I want you to do it as an exercise. Expanding map on the circle are topologically mixing. Okay, and then I finish here. Thank you.